Go to aportfolio.appstate.edu and log on with your regular ASU user ID and password. To create a new aportfolio, click the Create button on your home page. Give your aportfolio a title that starts with your name and then the class title. This naming system will help your professor distinguish between various students' ePortfolios. Ask your teacher whether the course has a specific template. If your course does have a specific template, select it. If not, the blank template is already selected as the default and is the best one to start with. Once you have selected your template, click Create. This is the landing page of your ePortfolio. The navigation menu is used to navigate, organize, name, and add pages to your ePortfolio. To edit the navigation menu, click on the blank space next to your menu items. Then, click the lock icon. Hover over the menu and the editing icons will pop up. Click the pencil icon. Here you will find all of the pages for your ePortfolio site. To add a new page, click Add a new page and give it a title. Short, concise titles are best. If you need to reorder pages, click on the icon to the left of the page name, drag the page, and drop. If you would like to designate a page as a subpage or submenu, click on the same icon and indent it to the right. To edit the title of a page, click on the title. If you need to delete pages, click the trash icon. You will be asked to type the word delete in all lowercase after you save the changes. Keep in mind that once a page is deleted, it cannot be restored. Once you are done creating your navigation menu, click Save. To stop editing the navigation bar, click anywhere on the page. You are currently seeing the home page of your site. Pages are made up of slides and content. Similar to PowerPoint, you have a blank slide on which you add your text, images, etc. The section here is called the Slide Content Area. This is where you will place text, images, or videos. To add content, click on the blue and white plus button. This is the Content Library. There are many options available that are based on the type of content you want to add. The four most commonly used types are text, images, PDFs, and videos. To add text, select the rich text icon. Once you have added a rich text box, you can type using the pencil icon. You will see a suite of options for stylizing your text on the edit bar on top. If you click the cog wheel, there are options for changing font size, color, justification, and more. To add a photo, image, or PDF, upload a file from your computer. You can also drag content directly from your computer to your ePortfolio slide. To add videos, simply upload the desired video to YouTube and copy the YouTube URL. Next, click the Embed option. Paste your URL into the box. To change your content, hover over the content you would like to change. Then, click the pencil icon. Clicking the pencil icon on PDFs, images, or photos will allow you to either replace the file or add more files. Clicking Add More Files will add additional photos which creates a photo gallery. This is the page that pops up when you click on Add More Files. Click Upload File to add additional photos and create a gallery. The gallery is a great way to display multiple PDFs or images without needing to add new pages. You can also provide a caption to give context to your images or PDFs. Use the grid icon to reorder your gallery. Use the gear icon to edit the settings of your slides, pages, or content. If you need to move your content, Hover over the content you would like to move and click the Move icon. Next, drag the content where you would like it to be. You may notice some lines on your page as you move your content. These are guidelines that can help you line up content. 
If you need to adjust the size of the content, click on one of the white circles in the corners of your content. Drag the circle until your content is the size you would like. You will see guidelines here to help as well. You may also notice a note that says hidden content. Click on this area to let the website automatically show all of the content, even if it was previously hidden. Backgrounds can give your site a more dynamic look and feel. There are three levels of backgrounds. Text background, top layer background, and bottom layer background. Click the cog wheel next to the text box. In this example, background refers to the background of your rich text area only. Padding refers to the space surrounding your text. You can change the background of your text using the color box here. This only affects the background of this text area. You can adjust the opacity of the background color as well. The top layer background is there within your content area. Click on the perimeter of the page. Then click the cog wheel. You can use color or images for your backgrounds. If you would rather use a picture as a background for your content, you can do so under image. It may help to play with the fix and repeat buttons until you have the look you like. The bottom layer background is the area outside and beneath the top layer background. Scroll down to see the slide background options and you will see the color or image background choices here. Your site automatically saves all of the work you do. However, if you do not publish your work, nobody but yourself will be able to see it. To publish your pages, click the hamburger icon in the upper right hand corner. Select Publish Pages. Pages that have a red draft bar next to them have not been published. Only pages with a green check next to them will be published. Once you have selected all the pages you wish to publish, click Publish. Your pages are now visible to your professor. If you would like to preview your page, click on the Publish View button at the top of the page. When you are ready to begin editing again, click on Edit Mode. It is suggested that you publish all pages frequently and at the end of each session, otherwise your instructor cannot see your work. You will add the course to your ePortfolio permissions to ensure your instructor can view it. If you don't, they will be unable to. To add permissions, first click on the hamburger icon in the top right. Next, click Settings. Under the Permissions section, you will see also share with specific people, groups, or courses. Click the Edit button. Type the name of your course into the text box. When your course appears, double check that the section number is the section you are enrolled in and click it. Finally, click Save Settings. Your professor may require you to submit your ePortfolio. The Submit option is found under the hamburger icon at the top right corner. Next, click Submit to Course. Then you will need to select an assignment to which you will submit your ePortfolio. You can see the title of the assignment and the title of the course beneath it. Please make sure you are selecting the correct assignment. You will need to select the page or pages to submit according to directions from your instructor. If you see the red drafts icon next to one of your pages, that means the page has not been published and your instructor will not be able to view the content on that page. You can remedy this by clicking on the Publish and Submit option. If all of the pages you are submitting have been published, you will simply see a Submit button. Once you have submitted, you can view the submitted portfolio, undo the submission, or click the X if you are finished. You can also find more tutorials at aportfolio.appstate.edu or email us at aportfolio.appstate.edu.